Chapter 511 Solving the Puzzle The next day, Hansen logged into the virtual camp at the time agreed with Tang Jinliu. According to the ID name that Tang Jinliu told him, Hansen added him as a friend. Tang Jinliu accepted Hansen's request and invited him to enter the room, changing the setting to no audience allowed. Tornado Knife was one of the secrets of Tang Jinliu's family. Although it was leaked once, the secret shall still be kept. Tang Jinliu demonstrated for Hansen in a slower speed than normal. In addition, he told Hansen about the keys of the tornado knife in slow motion, which could not be seen by outsiders. The front was different from the back. Because Tang Jinliu could not make much time every day, he was sacrificing his limited resting time and sparing one hour a day. Therefore, the two did not speak at all and went directly into the fight. Tang Jinliu slashed at Hansen with his weapon, and Hansen tried to block it. When the two weapons were about to clash, Tang Jinliu's weapon weirdly disappeared at Han Sen's side. When it appeared again, it was already on Han Sen's chest. Although Han Sen could use his footwork to dodge the strike, it would not be meaningful at all. If he could not block the strike up front, the best Han Sen could do is not to lose. If he could not beat Black God, it would mean nothing to Han Sr. Han Sen did not continue to dodge Tang Jinliu's strikes, taking the strike directly and feeling the rhythm of the skills. Again, Hansen waved his weapon again, attacking Tang Jinliu one more time. Although Tang Jinliu had explained the key to the skills, Hansen still felt it was difficult to predict the tornado knife in actual fight. It was mainly because the speed of the weapon was so fast that Hansen could only stop it by attacking Tang Jinliu. The best he could do was mutual destruction, and most of the time, Hansen was killed off directly. Neither of them could predict the other. However, because Tornado Knife was fast enough, Tang Jinliu was able to cut Hansen earlier, which Hansen had no solution to cope with. Again. 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 One hour had soon passed, but the result was not that great. When Tang Jinliu was using all he got, Hansen still could not block Tornado Knife. There is a unique way to use force in my family, which is integrated in Tornado Knife. It allows the speed to be incredibly high momentarily. At the same fitness level, one is unlikely to block Tornado Knife. In addition, Black God is even stronger than you. If you want to beat him, you can only rely on your footwork and wait for him to expose his weaknesses. Otherwise, it is hard for you to win. I am only sparring with you to get you familiar with the rhythm and attacking range of Tornado Knife, so that you will have more information when you face him again," Tang Jinliu said and quickly left the virtual camp. Hansen knew that Tang Jinliu was right. If it was the one-on-one, -on -one, Hansen could use his footwork to deal with Black God, and it will not be easy for Black God to beat him. However, that way, he will only have an opportunity when Black God made a mistake, which meant handing the initiative to Black God, which Hansen could not accept. In addition, the Black God shelter was huge, so Hansen would never have an opportunity to fight Black God one-on-one. -on -one. Black God would definitely be surrounded by other evolvers. In order to kill Black God, Hansen had to block Tornado Knife in front. So fast. How shall I block it? Hansen thought to himself, but did not have any conclusion. Beep beep. As Hansen was thinking, he suddenly heard a call on the virtual camp. He took a look and saw it was from Ms. Perfume. Hansen chose to accept, and Ms. Perfume suddenly appeared in front of Hans Senator. She looked at Hansen and asked, Coach, do you have time to teach me? I have several questions about last session that I want to ask you. I'm afraid today's not a good time. Hansen shook his head. He was thinking what the solution to Tornado Knife was and was in no mood to teach Miss Perfume. Chin Shin was slightly disappointed. She had waited for a long time to see Soldier on the warship again, but she did not have the opportunity to ask him questions. Naturally, she was let down. When Chin Shin was about to say goodbye, she suddenly heard Hansen asked, Do you practice fast sword or knife? Yes, but I am not that good at it. Chin Shin answered hastily. Atomic fission that she practiced was great in both strength and perseverance. That was why her techniques were all quite balanced. There were no extreme techniques. Then, if you encounter someone who is much faster than you, what will you do? Hansen did not truly want to ask her, but only voiced his concern. Chin Shin thought about it and said, avoid it with my footwork and then find the perfect opportunity. Qin Xian thought he was using questions to teach her and felt quite happy inwardly, not daring to take Han Sen's question lightly. If you could not dodge and have to fight it out with your opponent, what then? Han Sen asked again. 
If we are fighting for life and death, the faster one will definitely win. If I am not faster than my opponent, and I could only enhance my strength. Qin Xian said after serious consideration. Why strength? Hansen looked at her in surprise. He initially thought Qin Xian would say to increase her defense. Qin Xian thought Hansen was testing her, so she organized her words and said, if one is fast, then his strength must not be too strong. If I am strong enough, I will not die from his strike. However, my strike will kill him. That is a method. Although what you said might work, it is not the answer I want. Hansen shook his head with a wry smile. This method would not work against Tornado Knife. The strength of Black God was stronger than Hansen's to begin with. Even if they trade one strike for the other, Hansen would be the one who suffered more. I am not smart enough. Please instruct me, coach. Qin Xian could not think of a way to win when her opponents was faster than her. Hansen wanted to say he did not know, but when he saw Miss Perfume, Hansen suddenly thought of one thing. Last time, when he was teaching her, he was explaining the techniques in Dongshan Sutra. At that time, he explained several techniques that he was practicing. However, thinking of those techniques, Hansen's eyes suddenly lit up. It was not about those techniques, but about some other words in Dongshan Sutra. The other words were also included in the parts of Dongshua Sutra that Hansen had already translated. It was related to what Hansen had learned about footwork, but Hansen was not able to perceive it fully. However, thinking back, Hansen felt he suddenly understood those words. He invited Miss Perfume to fight and said to her, Come on, use all you got to attack me at full speed. Chapter 512 Sullen Tangjinliu Qin Xian was overjoyed, thinking Hansen was trying to teach her. She did not save any energy and cut at Hansen with Thunder Knife at full speed. Hansen had been practicing Thunder Knife as well recently, so he was quite familiar with the skill. When Qin Xian just raised her hand, before the skill was launched, she felt she had to stop. Although Hansen's hand moved later and slower than Qin Xian's, he placed his hand at a spot that made Mary feel very uncomfortable, stopping her from attacking. If Qin Xian continued her attack by force, her arm would hit Han Sen's hand blade. Qin Xian took back her hand and was ready to attack again, but the result was the same. Han Sen's hand was again placed at a spot that made her feel very uncomfortable. Qin Xian had changed the way to attack seven to eight times, but she was never able to make a complete strike. All of her strikes were forced to change in the middle, which made her feel so uncomfortable that she almost wanted to vomit blood. This way, Qin Xian was even more respectful toward Han Sen, believing more firmly that Han Sen was a martial arts master and some incredible figure in the military. I understand. Coach, you were saying that even if my opponent is fast enough, as long as there is space and distance, I could stay still to fight his moves and buy myself time using space and distance so as to react. Qin Xian said happily, It is not completely like that. You do not understand. If you practice more, you will naturally understand it in the future. Hansen was very happy, and he did not mean to put Qin Xian down. Qin Xian was right, he did buy some time using the distance. However, this amount of time was not enough for him to beat the opponent. The key to win was the word, block. In ancient times, there was a strategy in wars called attacking way to save Zhao, which meant attacking the opponent in his vital parts to make him give up the original target. The explanation about the word block in Dongshan Sutra was to attack where the enemy had to save and find out the enemy's weakness so as to tackle the enemy's strengths, making the enemy feeling uncomfortable to use his own strength. This technique was also called no kill. The aim of this technique was not to kill the enemy, but to force the enemy to take defensive position. As long as the enemy turned from attacking to defending, then Hansen could use his footwork. Since the enemy no longer had the ability to attack, it was just a matter time to beat him. In order to use the blocking technique well, Hansen must first figure out the importance of each moves, which meant he needed to understand the strengths and weaknesses of his opponent. For example, Hansen himself had also practiced Thunder Knife, so he knew what the positions that Qin Xian had to defend herself were. If Qin Xian uses a different technique that Hansen was not familiar with, the effect would not be as good. Currently, what was beneficial to Hansen was that Tang Jinyo, who had the same level at using Tornado Knife, was his sparring partner. All he needed to do was to fully understand Tornado Knife, and then he could reach the effect that Tang could not attack him at all. Thinking of that, 
Hansen wished that he could fight Tang Jinmyo right away, so as to familiarize himself with Tornado Knife. However, unfortunately, Tang Jinmyo had many tasks in the front, so he only had limited time every day. When he was in the middle of a project, he did not have time at all. Even so, Tang Jinmyo was astonished by Hansen's performance. Initially, he only wanted for Hansen to avoid the attacks when Hansen got familiar with the knife skills. However, Hansen was trying to block the attacks altogether. Tang Jinliu originally thought that was something couldn't be achieved. It was a family secret, and he knew very well how strong the techniques were, which were impossible to block. However, the more he sparred with Hansen, the more he doubted his own thought. When facing Hansen, Tang Jinliu felt harder and harder to make his moves. He felt like he was trapped in a barbed cage. Whenever he tried to reach out his arm, he would be stabbed. And when he was trying to reach out his legs, his thighs would be hurt. The feeling was so depressing that he almost wanted to vomit blood. The more he fought Hansen, the more painful Tang Jinyo felt. He almost wanted to drop his weapon. Weirdo. You and Lin Feng are both weirdos. Finally, one day, Tang Jinyo could not take it anymore. He threw his weapon away and exclaimed madly at Han Sr. Hansen knew that his blocking skills were quite good now. Although it might not work against other skills, it will definitely function when it came to Tornado Knife. All he needed to do was practice more in order to beat Black God. This time, you better not give me the chance. Hansen was thinking how he could get rid of Black God the Bastard. Tang Jin Liu was feeling quite glad. Luckily, his family had more secrets than Tornado Knife. Otherwise, in the future, he did not need to fight Hansen again and could simply call him Grandpa. In the meantime, Tang Jinliu swore to himself that he would never use his family skills again in front of Han Sr. Hansen asked Tang Jinliu to practice with him a few more days. In the end, Tang Jinliu had become the one who was tortured. He could not make his moves, and he was beaten miserably by Han Sr. Sometimes, Tang Jinliu could not stand it and use different knife skills to turn the situation around. When Tang Jinliu no longer wanted to spar with Hansen and avoided virtual camp, Hansen then gave up. Currently, Hansen was very confident to face Tornado Knife. However, he was not sure whether Black God had practiced other impressive skills. In addition, Black God had many master fighters that it was almost impossible to kill him without a perfect opportunity. If I could not kill you, I must gain some profits first. After learning from Li Xinglu and the recent moves of Black God, Hansen squinted his eyes. At this time of the year, because of the ocean currents or other causes, on the beach of Ice River where there were normally no creatures at all would witness the arrival of a large number of snake fish. They came to the beach from the ocean for unknown reason. Most snake fish were primitive creatures. However, if the cluster of fish was huge enough, there might be mutant and sacred blood snake fish among them. The beach of the Ice River was the territory of Black God Shelter. Every year, tens of thousands of snake fish would climb up from the ocean. They could always harvest several mutant snake fish and a sacred blood snake fish king. This was one of the fixed benefits of Black God Shelter. At this time of the year, Black God would summon a large number of people to come to the beach to hunt snake fish. Hansen arrived at the Ice River early. However, he did not go hunting, but dug an ice cave that only one person could fit in at a quarter of the beach. He then hid in the cave and piled up snow on the outside. No matter how hard Black God thought, he could not predict that someone would be hiding in the ice cave for several days. After the large cluster of snake fish had come to the shore, he led people to clear up the place and did not find Han Sr. Chapter 513 Snakefish King Hansen was hiding inside the ice cave, biting the meat jerky as he observed the situation from the gap he kept deliberately. A large number of snake fish started to climb out of the ice river and reached the beach covered in ice. More and more fish arrived, yet no one knew what they were trying to do. More than a thousand people had gathered from the Black God shelter, hunting the snake fish that had arrived. Snake fish looked like sea snakes. In fact, different from snakes, they did not have fangs or any teeth. Because they were covered in slime, weapons would easily slide on their skin. If one was entangled by the creature, its sharp scales on the stomach could even break one's bones. If there were not a huge group hunting snake fish together, a small number of people would easily be besieged by the snake fish and killed. Ordinary people did not have the conditions to kill them. Only a large force like Black God could organize some new people to hunt snake fish together. 
Because the Sacred Blood Snake Fish King had not appeared, the strong evolvers with a fitness level above 100 including Black God himself did not make a move. All they did was to lead thousands of evolvers to hunt the creatures on the beach. The primitive snake fish were all black. Occasionally, some larger snake fish with a golden lion on their back could be spotted, which were the mutant ones. Hansen had not seen the Sacred Blood Fish King, but he heard that the Fish King would be smaller in size, even smaller than primitive ones. It was probably around the size of an ordinary cobra. Because of this, Hansen wanted to steal the Sacred Blood Snake Fish King. If it were bigger, he could not take it away even after he stole it. The Sacred Blood Snake Fish King was perfect in size. There were two to three days from the snake fish arriving at the shore until they returned to the ocean, so Hansen was in no rush. The cold inside the ice cave did not have much of an effect on him. However, he was uncomfortable crawling and had to use Jade's skin to make himself feel better since he could not move. Luckily, the second day since the snake fish came to the shore, Hansen heard exclaims among the crowd. He quickly looked into the gap and saw a large ball of snake fish had arrived at the shore. On top of the ball, a small dark red snake fish was standing with its head up. The dark red snake fish was a bit more than six feet long. Standing on top of the wall, it had a pair of fins or wings on the back of its head. As the fins moved, it made a weird noise. The sacred blood snake fish king had eventually arrived. Hansen suddenly became excited, observing the condition on the outside. Once he had an opportunity, he would go ahead and catch the snake fish king. He had even planned the route to escape. Currently, it was the snake fish season. For the snake fish to arrive, so there were no other creatures in the ocean nearby. After Hansen took the Snake Fish King, he would rush into the ocean. Riding on the Silver Eel, he could escape with ease. As many people as Black God Shelter had, they could not catch up with him and had to watch him go. After the Snake Fish King appeared, the other Snake Fish became even crazier, rushing to the floor. The advanced fighters at Black God Shelter eventually moved. Five or six evolvers with fitness above 100 killed their way toward the Fish King, led by Black God. Other people continued to guard their own positions, killing the other snake fish. They did not look nervous at all. Obviously, they were quite experienced. Black God and his fellows rushed out, and primitive snake fish could not block their way at all. Very soon, they were approaching the snake fish king. Snake fish king issued a strange squeak and bounced itself into the air. Its fins moving, it flew in the sky like a bird. Its little wings were too small. On the back of its head, they looked like a pair of ears that were slightly bigger. Unexpectedly, it could fly with the wings. Black God and the rest were besieging the Fish King. As they hit it with their weapons, their weapons obviously slid off. They could not kill the creature in a short amount of time. The Snake Fish King was a hundred times more slimy than an eel. Even Sacred Blood Beast's Soul Sword would slide off its body, not leaving any marks. Even Black God's Tornado Knife did not work on it, which made Hansen feel quite surprised. If they could not hurt the Snake Fish King, how did Black God and the rest kill it in the past years? Those people did not use any special method but attacked the Snake Fish King together while killing the primitive snake fish that were approaching them. After watching for a while, Hansen could guess what they were trying to do. Although that Snake Fish King could fly, obviously it could not last long in the air since it took more than the little wings to fly. The first time when it was flying, it could maintain about 15 minutes in the air. However, Gradually, it could last shorter and shorter in the air and had to land. In the air, he did not have any point of force application. However, when it was on the land, there were points of force application. When the weapons cut it again, they would not slide off that easily. After watching for more than half an hour, Hansen noticed that the Snake Fish King was weaker and weaker. He knew that it was his opportunity, took away the snow on the outside, and climbed out of the ice cave. Currently, it was the key moment for him to hunt the Snake Fish King. Because the Snake Fish King had felt ominous and continued to scream, which made the cluster of Snake Fish even crazier. Everyone was doing their best to hunt the Snake Fish, and no one had extra energy to look at other people. In addition, they had already cleared the space and blocked the way to the beach, so there was no way they could expect an outsider present. Hansen got inside the group of thousands of people, and no one found he was an outsider. Hansen killed several snake fish casually and gradually approached. Black God and the rest had already circled the snake fish king in different directions for fear that it might escape into the ocean. 
It was harder and harder for the snake fish king to fly. It looked like it was about to be dead. Once it lost the ability to fly and could only wiggle on the ground, it would be easily killed. Hansen gradually approached Black God and his mates, focusing his eyes on their moves. Hansen thought, this is a good opportunity. If I could kill Black God here, then Black God's shelter would have no leader, which would make it much easier for me to conquer the shelter. Initially, Hansen only wanted to steal the Snake Fish King. Now that he had an opportunity to assassinate Black God, he would not let it go. Hansen focused on Black God first. Very soon, the Fish King could no longer fly. Black God was overjoyed, found an opportunity, and rushed to cut it in half. Chapter 514 Stealing Brother Watch out! When Black God was about to make a strike, he suddenly heard his friend calling him and felt ominous. Black God was indeed quite impressive and decisive. The moment he heard the voice, he directly fell forward. However, it was still a bit too late. He felt a burning pain on his back. It seemed that the armor on his back and his muscles were slashed open by sharp weapons. Hansen felt it was a shame. Black God and the top evolvers were a bit too far from the crowd. When he approached them, he was still discovered by an evolver opposite him, who warned Black God in time. With his claws, he did not kill Black God this time. Black God fell to the ground and rolled a dozen feet away, holding back the pain on his back. The five evolvers with fitness level above 100 came to Han Sr. Hansen did not linger. His strike did not kill Black God, so he knew that he had lost his opportunity. He rushed to the Snake Fish King directly, using the claws to cut off its head. Taking up the creature's body, Hansen ran toward the Ice River. Sacred Blood Creature Snake Fish King killed. No beast soul gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 Sacred Geno points. The Evolvers tried to stop Hansen, but Hansen swayed left and right, zigzagging among three persons momentarily. He ran past five persons nonstop. When Black God got up, holding back his pain, Hansen had already gone. It is that asshole. He's not dead yet? Kill him for me. Black God saw what Hansen looked like, recognized him, and yelled to the Evolvers in surprise and madness. The Evolvers quickly caught up with Hans Senator, however. Hansen directly jumped into the Ice River. A giant silver eel appeared underneath his feet. The giant silver eel broke the ice on the river and was a hundred feet away instantaneously, leaving Black God and his friends appalled on the land. Black God, I am taking some of the interest today. Next time I see you, I will kill you. Hansen said loudly and rolled the silver eye away. You are dead. I will kill you definitely. Kill you, Black God was so mad that he was standing, cursing at Hansen's direction. When he scolded Hansen, he moved his back, which made his injury so painful that his face became grim. Black God became very mad. Not only was he almost killed by a sneak attack, but his sacred blood snake Fish King was stolen. In addition, the one who did all that was someone who he thought it died underneath the frozen lake. Since he came to Second God's Sanctuary, Black God had never suffered so much, which made him so angry that he was about to vomit blood. Hansen disregarded what Black God did and rode the silver eel away, landing at a remote location. He summoned Meowth and rode Meowth away from the territory of Black God's shelter. La la la, la la la. I am a barbecue master. Hansen barbecued the snake fish that he had skinned on the convenient stove he brought with him and hummed a little song happily. It was not easy to get his hands on such a sacred blood creature. This sacred blood snake fish king would give him 8 or 9 sacred geno points at least. What was more important was that this creature was stolen from Black God, which made Hansen feel it was extra tasty. Just by smelling the fragrance of the barbecue, he could not stop his mouth from watering. Unfortunately, they only come to the shore once a year. Otherwise, it would be so good if I could steal one every day, Hansen thought as he barbecued. Before the barbecue was done, Hansen saw a man coming his way in the snow outside. Black God's guys are here? Hansen was surprised, glanced that way, and it did not look like it. If it were the people from Black God's shelter, this should be more than one person. The person walked closer, and Hansen saw what he looked like. Out of Hansen's expectation, he knew the man. Although they were not familiar with each other, he had a deeper impression of him. The grandson of Senator E. E. Dongmo. When Hansen participated in the contest of First God Sanctuary using Dollar's identity, Hansen beat E. Dongmu to become top 10. And the Fairy Queen was his reward for being one of the chosen. 
After that, he had never heard the news about Idomu again. Unexpectedly, Hansen ran into the person here. Idomu walked directly opposite Hans Senator. He looked at the barbecue on the stove and placed a fox-like red creature on the snow. Pointing to the barbecue, he asked, I want to trade this mutant creature for your barbecue. Will you do it? No. Hansen rejected directly, thinking, You think I'm an idiot? A mutant creature for my sacred blood creature? Idomu could not help frowning, checking Hansen out again. Because he had not had anything cooked in so long, he wanted to trade the mutant creature he hunted for the barbecue, which was unexpectedly turned down by the other person. Can I borrow your stove? Name your price. Idomu could not tell where Hansen was from, so he did not mind the answer. Idomu pointed to Hansen's stove said, The stove is quite cheap. Just use it, Hansen smiled and said. Idomu did not say anything but summoned a dagger to clean up the fox-like creature. Cutting off a piece of meat, he started to make the barbecue. The two persons did not converse much but barbecued respectively. When Hansen barbecue was about ready, he took a bite and felt it was so tasty. The grease melted in his mouth. So nice. Hansen took out some condiments to put on the barbecue before he gobbled it up. Idomu was stunned. It was the first time he saw someone being so relaxed when hunting. Not only had Hansen brought the stove, he also brought a dozen types of condiments which filled up a large bag. Swallowing, Idomu continued to make his own barbecue. However, Hansen's barbecue with condiments smelled so good that it was hard for Idomu not to notice. Idomu had been working hard to cultivate, trying to enhance his martial arts skills and clear his name that was belittled by Dollar. He often spent several months every time he came to the God Sanctuary, and sometimes even more than half a year. On the ice field, all he could eat what was raw meat. Even if he was made of iron, his stomach would no longer take it. Will you sell me the condiments? Idomu asked eventually. This is quite expensive, Hansen blinked and said. He was nice enough to let Idomu use the stove for free. There was no way he could give the condiments to Idomu for free as well. Hansen was the one who brought the condiments to the God Sanctuary. Name your price, Idomu said directly. Give me the remaining half piece of your meat, and you can use my condiments as you like. Hansen's condiments were not valuable in fact. However, because they were rare, they were worth something in this place. Without even blinking, Idomu threw the half piece of mutant meat to Hansen and said, Give me the condiments. I like a decisive person like yourself. Hansen gave the condiments to Idomu and took the mutant meat with pleasure. Chapter 515 Dollar would be better. How long have you spent in God's sanctuary? Idomu asked Hans Senior. Not long. Just a few days, Hansen said. Have you heard about Dollar recently? Idomu had spent about six months in the God Sanctuary this time. He had been hunting alone all the time and did not have any news from the outside. Hansen was dazed, as he did not expect that was what Idomu would ask. He thought about it and said, I heard that there was someone named Kill Dollar on the official platform. He had one consecutively. Some people said he was Dollar himself, and I wondered if that was true. Tell me about the details, Idomu said immediately. Having taken the mutant meat, Hansen explained briefly to Idomu, and added in the end deliberately, I have only heard about it. No one knows whether Kill Dollar's actual dollar, and I will be the last one to tell. It must be him. Except for him. No one could be that good, Idomu said assertively. Hansen was embarrassed inwardly. There were definitely evolvers who could be as good. He just had not met a truly good opponent. I want to hunt a sacred blood creature and need an assistant. Come with me, I will spare you 10% of the meat after I succeed. Idomu said to Hansen after eating a smaller half of the barbecue and taking the rest into his pocket. 20%, Hansen blinked and doubled the price. Let's go. Idomu did not bargain and asked Hansen to go with him. Hansen liked people like this a lot. Rich people who did not care about the price and only cared to be happy are the best. Following Idomu eastward on the ice field, Hansen reached the snow-capped mountains in less than two days. If he were to go back to Goddess Shelter, he must cross this region. However, because of the terrain, it was not easy to pass this region. Furthermore, if he encountered sacred blood creatures, it was too dangerous to fight on the mountains without the ability to fly. If he were not careful, he would fall into deep valleys. The reason that Li Xingluan and Black God would try to conquer the royal shelter before they expand to the mountainous region was because of the terrain, 
which was unsuitable for large-scale fights. You are not trying to enter the mountains to hunt sacred blood creatures? Hansen asked Edomu, surprised. Relax, there is no risks. I'm only asking you to lure the creature out for me. The rest is my job. That creature had suffered in my hands, so it would not dare to come out if I were there, Edomu said quietly. Hansen did not say anything more and followed Edomu into the snow-capped mountains. Like Edomu said, he did not go deep into the mountains, but stopped after climbing one mountain. Just walk around ahead of me. When the creature had come out, run in my direction. Edomu dug a hole in the snow and lay down, asking Hansen to bury him with the snow. Hansen knew that like himself, Edomu was also an assassin. He did not say much and followed Edomu's instruction, walking around in the valley ahead of him. Looking around, all he could see was continuous snow-capped mountains. There were no creatures, let alone sacred blood creatures. What creatures would be here? Hansen looked for a while and did not spot any creatures. As Hansen became impatient, he suddenly heard hoofbeat. From afar, he saw a donkey-like creature with a pair of antlers running from behind a mountain. Its hooves were rather wide, which prevented it from being trapped in the snow. It ran toward Hansen quickly, faster, and faster. There is a creature indeed. Hansen did not know whether this one was the one that Edomu was talking about. He turned around to run toward where Edomu was hiding. The creature looked like it could fly, running fast on the snow. Luckily, Hansen was close to where Edomu was hiding and soon reached him. The creature followed Hansen and approached him quickly. Edomu quickly emerged from underneath the snow, appearing under the stomach of the creature, stabbing his dagger into its stomach, making a long cut. The creature was bleeding on its stomach. Forgetting about Hansen, it neighed, turned around and ran. However, Edomu would never let it go. Catching up with it, he cut the creature repeatedly. The creature finally fell on the floor quietly. Good skills, good footwork. Hansen couldn't help complimenting. Idomu had made great progress in these years indeed. In addition, he was in Second God Sanctuary several years earlier, so he had improved his Geno points greatly. If it were Dollar, he would have killed the creature with the first strike. I am not good enough. Idomu said seriously. Hansen felt very embarrassed inwardly. Idomu was simply obsessed. It should have been several years since Idomu saw him. So there was no way Idomu knew what level Hansen was on. It was completely his own illusion. Is that the sacred blood creature that you were talking about? Hansen walked up to the creature and asked, puzzled. Although this creature ran fast, it did not look like a sacred blood creature judging from its fitness. Idomu shook his head. Not this one. This is a mutant creature. Idomu then paused and said, This is good as well. We will use this body as the bait. That creature would come out smelling the blood. You can stay here and make a barbecue out of this mutant creature. Idomu then dug another hole and hid himself again. Brother, you do not need to work so hard. How about we continue after eating something together? Asked Hans Sr. No need. If it were Dollar, he would have done even better. Idomu sent seriously and urged Hansen to bury him up. Hansen did not know what to say. Even he felt somewhat embarrassed. He did not feel he was as good as Idomu had described. Hansen buried Idomu up again. Dissecting the mutant creature's body, Hansen thought it was a bit too big for him to eat. He then summoned Meowth to offer him the food. Meowth bit the body of the mutant creature excitedly. As for Archangel, she did not care to eat mutant meat at all, not wanting to come out. Hansen took out a piece of barbecued snake fish king, eating while squatting. He soon heard the voice telling him the increase of sacred geno points. Seeing that Hansen was feeding mutant meat to his pet, he don't move frowned slightly. This behavior was a bit too extravagant. Even Idomu himself had never done that before. After all, the resources on this ice field were so limited that Idomu had not even filled up his mutant geno points yet. After Hansen had just taken a few bites, he heard loud hoofbeat behind the mountain again. Chapter 516 Killed by One Strike Meowth that was eating suddenly bristled. It bared its teeth toward the direction of the noise and growled fiercely. Hansen stared at the direction of the snow-capped mountain and soon saw a creature that looked like a triceratops rushing out from behind the mountain. Its horn looked like a silver awl and its skin looked like iron. The moment the triceratops came out, Hansen felt dazed. Hansen wondered if Edomu was dumb. Such a large creature weighed at least a dozen tons. It would take more than a year for someone to eat it. 
What use would it be even if he killed it? But then Hansen thought, Hidomu was probably just trying to gain the beast's soul. The meat was not that important to him. Hansen felt a bit upset. However, it would not be a waste if he got the meat. He would not eat himself, but he could feed Archangel. Hansen took Meowth and ran back. He did not need to move a finger anyway. With 20% of the meat, he could feed Archangel happily. That Triceratops had rushed to the location of the body of the mutant creature. Without a pause, it still came toward Hans Sr. Hidomu who was buried in the snow suddenly came out of the pit, stabbing his dagger at the stomach of the Triceratops. The skin of the Triceratops was much thicker than that of the mutant creature. The dagger of Idomu disappeared in the skin of the Triceratops, yet no blood came out. Only black leather and white fat was cut open. The Triceratops tried to get rid of Idomu under its stomach. However, Idomu moved up its body and came to its back like a gecko, stabbing its back fiercely. The Triceratops roared and stamped like crazy, trying to take Idomu down. However, Idomu stuck himself so closely to the creature that he would not fall. Hansen found a remote spot and sat down, caressing the head of Meowth and enjoying his barbecue as well as the performance of Idomu. Bravo! I will give you 9.9 .9 for this move. When seeing an excellent move, Hansen could not help sharing. Idomu was so upset. The skin of the Triceratops was so thick and tough that only a little blood came out when he had stabbed the creature multiple times. On the other hand, the Triceratops seemed to have infinite strength. Jumping and wiggling, it almost got rid of Idomu several times. He had to hold the creature tied with both hands and stick close to it. There was no chance for him to touch the dagger again. However, Hansen was enjoying the show, applauding when seeing something good, which made Idomu feel so upset he was about to vomit blood. Come and help me. Idomu could not last any longer and yelled to Hans Sr. That is not okay. We had an agreement. You give me 20% of the meat and all I need to do is to lure the sacred blood creature out. I will not mind other businesses, Hansen shook his head and said. If this creature runs away, you will get nothing, Idomu exclaimed again. If you want me to make a move, that is fine. However, that way, we could not split the meat like this. I must have 60% of the meat. 20% is my reward for leading it out. And the other 40% is what I should have for collaborating with you to kill it. Hansen counted his fingers and said, 60% is fine. You help me kill it, and you can take 60% of the meat. Idomu was in no mood to bargain with Hans Senator. His main goal was to try to gain the beast's soul. The meat was less important. Okay, that's a deal. Hansen then stood up, summoned his claws, and walked toward the Triceratops. Help me to distract it from the side. Seeing Hansen approaching, Idomu quickly said. However, Hansen did not pay any attention to him. He walked directly to face the Triceratops. The Triceratops noticed Hansen and rushed to him with its eyes red. It almost looks like a locomotive at full speed. Incredibly scary. Hansen was still walking toward the Triceratops at a normal speed. The moment it was about to clash with the Triceratops, Hansen's body suddenly leaned back. The Triceratops rushed over Hansen's body. Hansen was lying in the gap between its legs. The Triceratops went ahead but did not hurt Hansen at all. Hansen dusted off the snow on his body and got up. The Triceratops screamed with blood coming out of its stomach. It wiggled and fell to the ground with a thump. It struggled several times but failed to get up again. Hidomu jumped off the back of the Triceratops, observed the struggling creature carefully and saw three marks on its stomach that went through its entire body. Obviously, they were left by Hansen when he brushed by the creature. Hidomu stared at Hansen for a long while. He did not expect that the random person he met was such a master. He knew the impressive figures on the ice field, so he did not pay too much attention to Hansen when he first saw Hans Senator, however. Hansen's strike made Idomu feel utterly surprised. If you do not move fast, it will die, Hansen noted Idomu. Normally speaking, under these circumstances, Hansen would abide by the agreement. Since he had agreed to help Idomu kill the creature, and he had 60% of the meat, he did not need to be greedy about the potential beast soul. Idomu did not say anything and stabbed his dagger into the jaw of the Triceratops, ending its life with several strikes. Whether Idomu had gained a beast soul, however, he did not have any special expression after killing the creature. Walking up to Hansen, he said, You're good. Just average. I just broke a hundred, Hansen said casually. 
I know the locations of some other sacred blood creatures living alone. How about we continue to cooperate in the future? Hidomu said seriously. That's okay. However, if it were a long-term cooperation, we could not split like this, Hansen smiled and said. We will split the meat half and half. The beast's soul will depend on our own luck. The fact that Idomu said that Shodi reckoned that Hansen was stronger than himself. Otherwise, because he provided the location, he should have taken 10% more. Okay, Hansen agreed. It would take Hansen some time to find sacred blood creatures, and he would not necessarily be able to kill those creatures alone. Idomu will provide him with the location of the sacred blood creatures, and he could take half of the gains. There was nothing wrong about that. Let's split up the sacred blood meat first. Hansen pointed to the body of the Triceratops and said, You can have all of it. You have poison on the weapon, so the meat has already been contaminated. Even if I take it, I will not dare to eat it, Idomu said calmly. Thank you then. Hansen summoned the angel, asking her to eat the Triceratops up. Humanoid pet? What is the level of it? Idomu stared at the Archangel. With his background, he had never got a chance to have a humanoid pet. Sacred blood, Hansen said casually. Chapter 517, The Shame of Soldiers Hidomu stared at the angel eating the Triceratops, feeling dazed. It was very hard for him to imagine that the angel who looked like a little girl would be able to consume the better half of the meat of the Triceratops in a little while and did not seem to be stopping anytime soon. He turned back and looked at Hansen, seeing Hansen was eating his leftover barbecue. Hidomu's expression became more complicated. As the descendant of a senator, he was someone who had seen a lot. However, he had never seen someone like Hansen who fed a humanoid sacred blood pet with all his sacred blood meat since he entered Second God Sanctuary. The resources on the ice field were extremely limited. Although this creature was big in size, it was a sacred blood creature nonetheless. Feeding it all to the pet made even Idomu cringe. At this point, Idomu had to reassess Hans Senator Strong, Wanton, and Careless. Even Idomu felt puzzled about the background of Han Sr. It is about time. I must return to the Alliance now. Let's meet next time. After the Archangel finished eating the Triceratops, Hansen directly said goodbye. Although as long as Ji Yin and did not call him, he was idle and had infinite free time, he'd still go back from time to time in case Ji Yin and got worried. I will return to the Alliance as well. Let's go together. Although Idomu did not need to go back to the Alliance, he wanted to find out about Hansen's background and who he was. The two persons teleported back to the Alliance from Starwell Shelter. Hidomu immediately looked up all the information about Hans Senator the name Hans and being real was out of Hidomu's expectation. After looking up Hansen's materials, Hidomu felt quite strange. Judging from Hansen's background, he was such an ordinary guy that it did not match his achievements at all. From his information, the biggest difference in Han Sin's life was his girlfriend Ji Yanran. However, although the JIS were an incredibly prominent family, Han Sin only knew Ji Yin and after he went to the military academy. Before that, he did not receive any help from the JIS. Even now, the JIS had not been helping Han Senator before Ji Yin and married the guy. The JIS had no reason to help him. Whether she would marry Han Sin was still unknown. Aside from that, Idomu felt incredible reading about Hansen's growth. Idomu thought if he were Hansen, he would never have achieved what Hansen had. In addition, according to the information, Hansen had entered Second God's Sanctuary for less than a year. The fact that he had such fitness on the ice field with limited resources made Idomu feel incredulous. How did he do it? Idomu couldn't help frowning. Hansen returned to Daphne, trying to meet Ji Yanran. However, at the door, he was blocked by Annie. We are both guards. Why are you minding my business? Hansen was very upset with Annie. Since she had come, he did not have much chance to be alone with Ji Yanran. Because I said no, and he stayed cold and said, What if I must go inside? Hansen was mad, asking Annie coldly. You can try. Annie looked at Hansen indifferently, as if she were looking at a dead man. Hansen immediately wanted to go inside by force. Just because she was a surpasser, Annie was being incredibly arrogant, which pissed him off. The doors of Ji Yinran's office suddenly opened and Ji Yinran came out from inside. She held Han Sin's hand and said to Annie, Colonel Annie, he is also my guard. He has the right to see me at any time. I'm sorry, Miss Ji. The order I got was to protect your safety 100%, 
ruling out all the unsafe elements. And he said calmly, Please, Captain, this is in the military, Ji Yinren said, a bit upset. And he did not speak again, but she looked the same, not taking Ji Yinren's words seriously. Ji Yin and did not say anything more and pulled Hansen into her office. Do not have any conflict with her in the future. She will kill you, Ji Yin and said helplessly to Han Sr. A guard can be so arrogant? Disrespecting your words? Hansen said. Technically speaking, she is my guard. However, I do not deserve to have a guard like that with my current position. She was arranged by that person in my family. In fact, she only listens to him, and my words are basically useless, Ji Yin and said helplessly, leaning against Han Sr. However, she is also doing it for my safety, so do not provoke her in the future. Hansen nodded. He also knew that Ji Yinran's safety depended on Annie. It was impossible for her to count on him as her guard since he was away all the time. When Hansen left Ji Yinran's room, it was already nighttime. Annie was still guarding the door. Judging by her position, it seemed she had not even moved in the past couple of hours. Men like you are ashamed of all soldiers, when Hansen just stepped out of the room, he suddenly heard Annie saying coldly, Are you talking about me? Hansen turned around, stared at Annie and asked, The most disgusting are men who live off women like you. And he said to Hansen, disgusted. Hansen looked Annie up and down for several minutes, but he said nothing. What are you looking at? Annie felt uncomfortable under his gaze and exclaimed coldly, With the professional judgment of someone who lives off women, I can tell you that you do not have what it takes for a man to live off you. You will probably die alone, Hansen said seriously. You. Annie was shivering in anger. You think you are so good because you are a surpasser? If I were a surpasser, I could kill you with one strike. Do you believe that? Hansen curled his lips and said, I will wait for you to become a surpasser and see how you kill me with one strike. Annie's face became blue. However, she was not someone good at talking. She was so angry that she could say nothing. In fact, there was a reason for Annie to hate Hansen so much. Because her dad died early, she was raised by a single parent. Later on, Annie's mother found a boyfriend who initially treated both Annie and her mother well. He had nice temper and worked hard. Even Annie as a little girl thought he was a good man and called him father. Who knows that the man was not only a gigolo, but also a fraud. A couple of days before he was about to marry Annie's mother, he took away all their belongings, which made life very hard for Annie and her mother. She grew to loathe this type of man very much. Furthermore, Hansen came to Daphne and became Ji Yenron's guard because of nepotism. Coupled with what Annie had heard at the JIS, she hated Hansen very much. You do not have to wait until the future. If you dare to play with me, I can prove it to you how weak you are if we are of the same status, said Hansen, curling his lips. Chapter 518 Bully Annie. What do you want? Annie thought Hansen wanted her to suppress her strength to fight him. Annie did not mind that. Even if she had to lower her strength, she believed she could beat Hansen completely. Let's go to the training room, Hansen said and walked toward the training room. Now is not the time. Annie did not move, but said coldly. What? Are you afraid? Hansen looked at her sarcastically. Annie ignored it and said, Now I still have to work. I will see you at the training room in three hours. Okay, I will wait for you. Hansen appreciated this quality about her very much. She was indeed a good soldier, loyal to her duties. Hansen returned to his room and caught the unicorn beetle which was going around everywhere. Without eating or drinking, it did not starve. Hansen tried to feed it with different things, but it was not interested in any food. Hansen wondered how it kept itself alive. At the agreed time, when Hansen reached the training room, he saw that Annie had changed from uniform to a white combat suit. Let's begin, she said coldly, seeing Hansen coming in. What do you want? Hansen stood outside and did not enter. Don't you want me to suppress my strength to fight you? Are you afraid now? Annie said with contempt. Sister, when have I said that? I am no idiot. Even if you suppress your own strength, your eyesight and reflex are not something that could be reduced. I am not foolish. So why would I ask for that? Hansen curled his lips. Then what do you want? Annie frowned. We have both learned military boxing, right? Hansen said. What if I have? Annie asked. If you have learned it, that's easy. Let's do it the civilized way. I name a move, and then you can name a move. We will both use the techniques from voter boxing only. If 
that fair? Hansen said. The way of combat is focused on the reflex and flexibility. If we are talking about the moves, how can we decide who is the winner? Moving the lips is no fun, said Annie frowning. Just tell me if you dare to do it. If you do not dare, you can leave now and stay out of my way in the future, Hansen said contemptuously. Okay, I will see what tricks you have up your sleeves. Annie did not believe that Hansen would win using the same military boxing. Lady first, you go. Hansen felt relaxed as he was fully confident. Talking about the moves, he would definitely win. All other elements were ruled out and only the moves matter. It was like playing Go. Although the pieces were the same, the method to calculate was different. In order to win, the strategy was key, which was what Hansen was good at. Strength, speed, and reflex were less important. Although Annie was surpasser, a civilized fight like this one wiped clean all her advantages. On the other hand, Hansen who was good at calculation had an advantage. Head punch. Annie thought about it and set a move of attacking. Sideway punches, left of your ribs, Hansen answered quickly. Backward elbow, turning to the left to attack your neck. Annie felt slightly uncomfortable. She had never tried to make the move mentally and had to think for a while before she said anything. The two persons exchanged 30 moves and then Annie felt something was wrong. She found herself trapped in a dangerous situation. Although the moves were all the same, Annie felt it was hard for her to attack. When 14 moves were exchanged, she could no longer think of a way to dodge Hansen's attacks. You lost, Hansen said contentedly. This is just talking. If it were in a real fight, you could never have done that, Annie said, unwilling to accept her failure. That is okay. We can act out what we had just said. However, this time, neither of us shall use force. We will just act out what we had said, Hansen walked up to Annie and said. Okay. Annie did not believe that. However, when the two persons were sparring like Hansen had just explained, Annie did not have anywhere to dodge when it came to the 39th move. Unless he used speed and strength beyond Hansen, she would lose for sure. How about that? Are you convinced? Hansen glanced at Annie and said, This is the first time for me to do this. I'm not like you who is all talk. Annie was not convinced. She did not believe that she would be inferior to Han Sr. That's fine. We can do it again. I will beat you until you are convinced, Hansen curled his lips and said. Okay, but we will both speak and act out this time. Annie thought she lost to Hansen because she was not good at imagination. Okay, Hansen smiled and said. Acting out was not the important part. As long as no strength was involved, then Annie would not still be inferior to him. After all, everyone had a specialty, and Hans Sins was calculation. Annie seemed to be the type that were good at violent moves. The fight began again. However, the result was no different from last time. This time, she lost even faster. She could no longer continue after the 35th move. Are you convinced? Hansen asked again. No. Annie bit her lips. Unable to accept the fact that she was inferior to Hans Senator, there was no way she was now the match of a man who lived off a woman. Then let's do it again, Hansen grinned and said. Annie was looking for trouble herself, so he had no reason not to give it to her. Annie was somewhat stubborn. They fought for more than 30 times and she did not win even once. Lost, lost, and lost, she did not even make it to the 40th move once. Although she did not use strength and her energy was not consumed, she became pale and sweaty on her forehead. She did not understand why she would lose to Hansen again and again using the same moves only with different order, not to mention in such a miserable way. Initially, she thought as long as she was familiar with this way of fighting, she could turn the situation around. All her previous losses were just because she was not used to it. However, the fact was cruel. Whether or not she knew the way of fighting well, she lost equally. Annie found that she was so weak in front of Hansen just based on the moves in martial arts. This man who she despised seemed to be exceptionally good in this regard. Now Annie had understood she was no match to Hansen in this respect. Do we need to continue? Hansen smiled at Annie. It is no wonder that you want because you have studied these trivial matters. However, if it were a real fight, there is no way you could beat me. Annie knew that she had lost, but she would not admit it. Then let's fight for real, Hansen said abruptly. Chapter 519. Hunting on the bottom of the lake. You really dare to fight me? Annie was dazed. She did not believe that Hansen dared to fight her. In terms of real fighting abilities, Hansen was quite weak compared to her. Yes, 
but hands only. Hansen smiled. Hansen explained himself. What he was talking about was to play red hand. If she were to fight him, Hansen might not even be able to survive two or three strikes from Annie. Okay. After hearing Hansen's explanation, Annie agreed without hesitation. The fact that she was not able to use her strength just now made her feel quite sullen. Although there were many limitations in terms of playing red hands, she could use her own speed and strength to punish Hansen slightly in order to avenge herself. Annie did not believe that she would still lose to Hansen when she could use her own strength and speed. That could never happen. You made the first move just now. So, it is my turn this time, right? Hansen asked Annie. She did not say anything but put her right hand above Hansen's right hand. She did not believe that Hansen could beat her with his speed. Did you know why you lost just now? Hansen asked her suddenly. Why? Slap. Annie was still preoccupied with the fact that she had lost to Hans Senator when Hansen mentioned it. She was distracted immediately. When she was about to ask why, Hansen's hand had already hit hers. You were shameless. Annie gritted teeth, wanting to kill Hansen immediately. The game is all about tricks. If they are not allowed, you should say that earlier. Tell me, are tricks allowed? Hansen asked, smiling. As you. Slap. When Annie just said two words, she was hit on her hand again. Annie was so pissed that she almost vomited blood. Staring at Hansen with her eyes wide, she almost looked like a tigress that was about to swallow Hans Sr. Hansen played red hands with Annie from the very beginning. It would be hard for him to hit her even with his sneak attack skills, considering her reflex and speed as a surpasser. However, because Hansen had already broken the peace of her mind earlier, she could no longer treat the game normally which was why he was able to affect her state of mind and hit her unexpectedly. At this point, Annie's mind had become a mess. She was watching out for Hansen at any moment. However, the more she did that, the easier it was for her to be hit. Slap, slap, slap. Annie stared her eyes wide, watching Hansen as if she had seen a ghost. She was both sullen and angry. There was no way she could understand why she would not be able to dodge Hansen's strikes based on her speed. She hated Hansen's shamelessness and wickedness even more, which distracted her each time so much that she could not focus on dodging his strikes. As the stone was tossed into a well, there was bound to be ripple. The amazing fact about human mind was that sometimes you knew what the right thing to do was, but you could not control your own temper and thoughts. Annie knew that she should calm down and stay away from Hansen's provocation. However, she was so upset at this point that Hansen's smiles made her feel incredibly angry. There was no way she could calm down. Slap, slap, slap. Annie was hit again and again. She could not tolerate Hansen's words. Boom. All of a sudden, electricity boomed on Annie's body, turning her into a burning light bulb. She hit the table with her palm and turned the table into ashes. Hansen looked at Annie, appalled. He was terrified. The strength of a surpasser was so scary that it was beyond imagination. If it were him that Annie attacked, Hansen would probably become ashes as well. Fortunately, it was in the Alliance, so there was no way Annie would lay a finger on him no matter how mad she was. Watching Annie was so mad that she was shivering and sparkling. Hansen said with a smile, you want to hit me because you lost? Staring Hansen for a long while, lights disappeared on Annie's body. Without saying anything, she turned around and left. She was afraid that she might not be able to resist the urge to kill Hansen if she said one more word to him. Asshole, bastard. Shameless. Annie did not go back to her room but went to the virtual camp directly. She vented her madness in the virtual camp like crazy. Seeing the alloy table that had turned into ashes, Hansen could not help spitting his tongue. He decided not to provoke that woman killer. If she disregarded anything and hit him, Hansen could not survive a strike from her at all. Surpasser is so scary. They're not human anymore. Although Hansen said that, he looked forward to becoming a Surpasser even more. After eating the entire Snake Fish King, Hansen had gained 9 Sacred Geno Points, and currently, he had 21 Sacred Geno Points already. When Hansen was trying to find Edomu to hunt Sacred Blood Creatures together, he failed to find him. Without other sacred blood creatures to hunt, Hansen thought of the crab again. Although the shell of the golden crab was hard, Hansen had practiced the Ean Force and could penetrate its shell. Maybe he could kill it after all. The key was his strength. If he did not have enough strength, that was fine as well. 
Hansen decided to dive into the Crystal Palace first, hunt some primitive fish creatures at the bottom of the lake, and fill up his primitive geno points. Hunting fish creatures at the bottom of the lake was much easier than fishing. Hansen returned to the bottom of the frozen lake again. With the silver eel this time, it was easy for him to come to the Crystal Palace. The golden crab climbed out after hearing the noise. When it saw it was Hansen, it quickly went back to the cabin, disregarding what Hansen was doing outside. It never went out again. Hansen did not provoke the crab, but looked at the fish creatures that were swimming at the bottom of the lake. He thought to himself, when I have the Crystal Palace to myself, I will never worry about creature resources because I can go to the deep ocean to hunt. Since the Crystal Palace was indestructible, Hansen was not afraid to encounter scary creatures at the bottom of the sea. He could always hide in the cabin. The most important thing at this moment was to control this Crystal Palace. Otherwise, he could go nowhere. Standing on the deck, Hansen felt like he was in an aquarium. Above his head, all kinds of fish creatures were swimming around. However, because there was no glass, Hansen could reach into the water to touch them. After waiting for a while, when seeing a golden anchovy swimming nearby, Hansen reached out immediately and grabbed it into the shelter. The golden anchovy suddenly fell on the floor. Without water, it had lost almost all its abilities to fight. All he could do was to jump and try to go back to the water. However, Hansen would never give him the opportunity and trampled it to death. Primitive creature golden anchovy killed. Beast soul of golden anchovy gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 primitive geno points randomly. Chapter 520. Killing the golden crab. It was so easy to kill fish creatures the bottom of the water. I must get my hands on the crystal palace. This is such a bug. With the crystal palace, I own the entire ocean. Hansen was overjoyed. He summoned Snow Charmer, asking her to shoot down the creatures in the water with her spear, while Hansen was cooking the fish, feeling relaxed. Meat of golden anchovy eaten. One primitive geno point gained. Snow Charmer killed primitive golden swordfish. Beast soul of golden swordfish gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 primitive geno points. Hansen did not have to move a finger. As he was reading, Snow Charmer could help him kill the creatures and Mermaid Princess would cook the creatures for him and even feed them to him. All he needed to do was to open his mouth. This is such a life in heaven. I have wasted more than two decades. This is what hunting should be like. Hansen felt so good as he could gain Geno points while lying. If I could get that silver-haired royal spirit as well, that would be even better, Hansen thought to himself. There were all kinds of creatures at the bottom of the lake. Some Hansen could not recognize at all. There were shellfish as big as a mill, lobsters as big as a motorcycle, and even sea beasts of different shapes. There were many mutant creatures. However, because Crystal Palace could not be moved, Hansen could only wait for the creatures to approach the shelter to kill them. If he entered the water, even he would not be the match of those creatures, not to mention Snow Charmer. This made Hansen want the Crystal Palace even more. If the Crystal Palace could be moved as he wished, he could kill all the creatures he liked. Even so, Hansen had incredible gains still. In just a dozen days, he had filled up his primitive Geno points and gained 17 mutant Geno points. In addition to the increase in his Geno points, he also gained a dozen primitive beast souls and a mutant beast soul. These gains were much more than back in the days when Hansen hunted alone. The only shame was that he did not hunt any sacred blood creature. There seemed to be only one sacred blood creature, which was the silver eel in the area of the frozen lake. Other than that, there was the golden crab. For the dozen days, Snow Charmer had hunted a lot of primitive creatures. Since Hansen could not finish all the food himself, he piled the food up, wanting to sell it after he got out. Who knows that the golden crab was so shameless that it came to take some every day, treating Hansen's place as its kitchen. Damn you, crab. I must get straight with you today. Hansen had tolerated its behaviors for days and felt he should be on the same level as the golden crab in terms of fitness. So, he planned to try to kill it, getting the crystal palace back. As usual, the golden crab came to Hansen to steal the meat again. When it turned away, Hansen used his claws to hit the crab's shell. The golden crab quickly reacted. It threw away the two fish it had taken. Flipping itself around, it shot its pincer at Hansen's claws. Ding! The pincer hit the claws and sounded like metal. Hansen stepped back three times before he could stabilize himself. The golden crab also fell back. 
They were about on the same level judging from this round. Seeing that his strength was no weaker than the golden crab, Hansen felt overjoyed and waved his claws again. However, this time, Hansen did not hit the golden crab head on, but walked around it using kiting skills. Very soon, Hansen found an opportunity to hit the crab heart on its shell. However, the claws only left three shallow marks on the golden shell and did not crush it. So hard. After fighting for more than half an hour, Hansen made several hits on the golden crab, but only shallow marks were left. The crab was not hurt for real. Hansen took his claws back and decided to use his fists to fight the golden crab. When hitting the golden crab, he secretly used the Ian Force. However, since the Ian Force only penetrate 3 to 4 inches, Hansen could not really hurt the crab if he was hitting at the wrong spot. Boom! Hansen found an opportunity to hit the golden crab on its head. Suddenly, he saw the golden crab wobbling as if it were drunk. Hansen was overjoyed, going up to hit its head hard. The golden crab seemed to be dizzy from the hit. Its strikes were no longer organized or forceful. For several punches, Hansen had hit the head of the golden crab repeatedly. The in force went deep, and the golden crab became even more dizzy. It could no longer stand straight and fell on the floor. Hitting madly on the crab shell with his fists, Hansen sent in force into its head. Gradually, it stopped moving. Sacred blood creature Golden Pincer King killed. Beast soul of Golden Pincer King gained. Eat its meat to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Hearing the voice at last, Hansen felt overjoyed. He quickly checked the type of the beast soul of the Golden Pincer King. Type of beast soul of sacred blood creature Golden Pincer King. Armor. Hansen summoned the beast soul and golden armor suddenly appeared on his body, covering him up completely. He looked lean and strong, full of power. At first sight, this armor and the black beetle armor were very similar. They were both golden armor that covered the whole body. However, their shapes were slightly different. The helmet of the pincer king armor was clearly a golden crab. Eventually, I have a sacred blood armor again. In the future, I will use the black crystal to turn it into a berserk sacred blood beast soul. At that time, I think not even sacred blood weapons could hurt it. Hansen was very happy. He was used to having sacred blood armor with him. When he came to Second God's Sanctuary, he had always wanted his armor, and this was his dream coming true. Putting the armor on, Hansen climbed on the boat and walked slowly into the cabin. After passing the hall, there were corridors and rooms inside everywhere. He did not encounter any other creature. However, Hansen could not find where the operating room was, so he had to summon Mermaid Princess. Mermaid Princess guided Hansen's way, and they soon reached the operating room, which was on the upper level of the crystal sailboat. Seeing the crystal rudder, Mermaid Princess cheered and grabbed it. The moment she grabbed the crystal rudder, Hansen felt the entire crystal sailboat was vibrating, making squeaking noises. Looking from the crystal window ahead of him, Hansen saw the weather was flowing and the sails rose. The entire sailboat was rising slowly. My dear master, where do you want to go? Mermaid Princess looked at Hansen, excited. 